Okay, so now, staying in the NFL, we just talked about the NFL Network. Now, let's see what another network got to say about the, NFL, the upcoming NFL season. ESPN just dropped their preseason uh, power rankings. Uh, the, the top five went as such, Chiefs, Bucks, Bills, Packers, and Rams. The bottom five went as such, Bengals, Jaguars, Jets, Lions, and Texans. So everybody's in between those 10. So with that said, Jay, um, we, we had a chance to go over this list and kind of evaluate a little bit before the show. What, what, what is the, hyper, the hyperbole of this list? I got a feeling... You, you might start somewhere with the Broncos, but, you know, the floor is yours. So, what, what, what do you see that was just straight blasphemous? I, I'm going I'm to I'm come back to that. I want to start, I want to, because I want to start with the good stuff. Because I think, um, okay. I think the Chiefs and Bucks, you know, I think them at one and two. I think there's an argument to be made. I mean, Tampa Bay is the defending champs. They got all the starters coming back. So I think there's a I think there's a good argument that can be made that maybe they deserve the top spot. But of course, as we just laid out, the Chiefs got the, the Chiefs, we believe, had the best player in football. I think he's gonna be the best quarterback in football for years to come. And that's a that's a huge trump card that uh Andy Reid and the Kansas City Chiefs have. Uh, but I do think those are the best uh, uh teams right now. I, I kinda wanna I kinda wanna flip flop uh Green Bay and Buffalo, but I get it. Buffalo, I mean that's in all credit, like not only to Josh Allen, but Sean McDermott, who's done a a fantastic job up there in Buffalo, making them a uh, you know bona fide contender, and unseating the New England Patriots as of right now. The other thing, the th the thing that stands out to me as far as like divisions, is the NFC West is given a lot of respect here, and, and rightfully so. I think that is the best division in football. You have the Rams at five, you have Seattle at eight, San Francisco at ten. So looks like ESPN's banking on them them guys to be healthy. If you're gonna if you're gonna be ten, you gotta have a you're gonna have to have a uh, decision be made at quarterback, Kyle Shanahan, and the Cardinals. You know, because we've been talking about Cliff Kingsbury, how there appears to be some pressure there. You know, you can't imp you can't bring in all these you know, just veteran stars that you know. I understand they probably on the back nine of their career, but guys like AJ Green and JJ Watt. I mean, you can't be bringing these guys in and then say, oh well, we're just. What are you doing? Are you going to be eight and well, you can't be eight and eight? I guess you'd be eight, eight and one. But you, like I said about um, Minnesota earlier, three wild cards, you might want to snag one of them. Or, you know, you just you just can't keep accumulating talent and not do anything with it. Right. Um, I, I think, um, and you you brought up a good point. Maybe this has to do with the Carson Wentz situation with you know the the whatever injury he's dealing with. But I really think I really think it's a mistake to think Tennessee is that much better than Indianapolis because I think Indianapolis, especially defensively, I think Indianapolis, I would give them a, a, uh, a clear edge on the defensive side of the ball. And I just, I know it's been a while, but Ryan Tannehill ain't never been an MVP candidate in this league. Carson Wentz has, I'll leave that there. Um, I think it's, well, I think I, it's also, I got, now I just got one question for you. If Carson Wentz, because it seemed like Carson Wentz might miss what like the four, first I don't know, four to six weeks, four to six weeks of the season, do you think Jacob Eason has enough around him that he can hold, not necessarily win the division to Carson Wentz, but hold it down, hold the fort down, you know, to hold the, the Titans back to be in the driver's seat of the division until Carson Wentz come back. And if okay, and, and if they're taking it, and I haven't seen that as far as Carson Wentz missing missing that much time, and that, that's absolutely a fair point. So if he's going to be out that long, you know, maybe that takes the division out of play. But I do think, I mean, there is enough there for Jacob Eason to hold the hold the line. And can you play 500 ball, or can you just like help us tread water to like? a two and three start or something like that. Like, don't embarrass us. But I do think there is enough there for them to get by. Another thing, like, New England slipping, they down here at 17. Not only are they obviously below the Bills, but they're below the Dolphins. That's something worth watching. The Saints, I think, I understand. I mean, I know Drew Brees isn't there. Maybe that's probably where a lot of the reservations lie. But that Saints still have a lot. They got a lot of talent. And I am going to say this. I know Jameis Winston, like he he probably good for a few interceptions here and there. 
But I think they're going to dial up some big plays this year because I know he's going to be able to throw the ball more than 20 yards down the field. No disrespect. Yeah. No disrespect. So, I mean, we just saw it. I know it was only preseason, um, but, I mean, they sh- – uh, hello, Tre- Trevor Lawrence did not look good in that preseason game. We just saw. I know that's just the Jaguars. I know it's a working quarterback. I get it. I know he was in a heated competition with Gardner Minshew. I get it. So, um, but you know, at the listen, let's go to the bottom where there's some definitely some deserving teams to go down there. Houston is an it's the abject mess. So I can't be, you know, that's that's clear to me that they at the bottom. I wish, I honestly wish the Detroit Lions would be at the bottom just so I could just laugh at Dan Campbell some more. But I'm sure he's busy. I'm sure he's over there prepping Deuce Staley for his head coaching job. So I know he's a bit distracted. We understand the Jets are going to be awful. All their players keep getting hurt. You know, I really, I mean, Zach Wilson seems like a heck of a kid. And, uh, you know, he's he's shown, he, I think he's shown some good things so far in the preseason. But Lord have mercy when the season starts. I hope that they can, you know, patch some of them dudes up and get them back in the lineup for him, starting with this, uh, that big left tackle they had, Makai Becton. Uh, you know, but, you know, just, and I don't like to go off on tirades that are, you know, per, uh, per, uh, personal for teams that I support or anything, but really, you read these teams off to me, and it was about, like, you got to the middle of the pack, and I was like, I gotta, I'm gonna tell you, like, the fact that the Chargers are that far ahead of the Denver Broncos, uh, put the little antennas up. I expected them to be a couple of spots after them. I would probably say put them in about 17 and I get it. But to have them, I don't think you I don't think you can sell me on any of the teams 21 through 25 as being better than the Denver Broncos. The the Raiders, the Bears, the Falcons, the Giants, the Panthers. I'm not here for it. I'm t- I'm gonna tell you right now. <laughs> Denver's gonna be better than every one of those teams this year. And I think there's and and I know I don't I don't like I don't love this Teddy Bridgewater thing, but in this argument right here, it helps me because I know Teddy Bridgewater ain't gonna ain't gonna be out there uh, turning the football. I know that. So and that's all Dem- to me. That's all Denver needs. They need a competent quarterback that can manage the game because they have a lot of talent around him. Cortland Sutton is back. Jerry Judy, KJ Hamler, Noah Fant. Melvin Gordon, you got the young man Javante Williams in the backfield with you as well. Um, and then defensively, like I, Vic Fangio going to have this defense balling out of control. Von Miller's back. I know he's coming off injury. He's older. But Bradley Chubb is, is poised for a big season. Uh, Justin Simmons with the big contract in the, in the backfield. The cor- They got cornerback depth out of just the wazoo. Patrick Sertan, I think he's going to do very well for them. I think it's a mistake to devalue this team to that degree that's it. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, you know, I had to let you go ahead and get it get it off your chest. Um, so, like I said in the lead, in, you got your top five and you got your bottom five. And listen, as you see, the, the, the separation between the top five and the bottom five is quarterback play. Um, Kansas City, <laughs> uh, Tampa Bay, Buffalo, Green Bay, and the Rams. I mean, yeah, if you want to hit me with some – well, we don't know how Matt Stafford going to play with the Rams, but we know how Matt Stafford going to play. Like, and now he got upgrades in every – even with, with Cam Akers going down and Sonny Michelle coming in, it's still an upgrade in the running back um, position for him. So, yeah, I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say he's going to do – he's going to do okay. Yeah, granted, he's in the most competitive division in the National Football League, but he will play – I think up to a standard that would um, justify the Rams being the top five team. Then you go to the bottom, and you get the exact opposite of quarterback play. You got the Texans that might put a kick return at quarterback by the time week one roll around. You you got the Lions. We, I mean, Jared Goff, we ain't never been sold on Jared Goff. And then when you add in Dan Kneecaps in there, we, we just can't trust what we're going to get out of Detroit Lions. Somebody make a hey them Broncos out hey hey we we'll we'll probably get a Bronco a Ford Bronco that can fly in Detroit before Detroit Lions actually be a viable option for a contender. Um, New York Jets, let's be real here. Listen, Zach Wilson could be the next coming of Peyton Manning, John Elway, Terry Bradshaw, Joe Montana, whatever quarterback you want to put in there. But the fact remains this: 
he's wearing a New York Jets uniform. And that's all that needs to be said. And then with Jacksonville, listen, like you said, we yeah. <laughs> Hey, Trevor Lawrence, hey, Trevor Lawrence, you're a long way from Clemson, aren't you? A long way from Clemson. Those days of just having all the talent in the world and everybody throwing the rose petals at your feet and you just, hey, I can mail it in and still be in the national championship. Those Pulling out the red carpet. Gone. You know what I'm saying? Those <laughs> days are gone. They are gone. Hey, for all intents and purposes, you and Urban Meyer are in what we like to call the bottom of the barrel. And um, good luck with that. Uh, you know, I think I would have swapped the Eagles and the Bengals. I think the I Bengals agree. just, I agree. just, you know, right, just off the strength of Joe Burrow, I, I'm switching that because we already know what we got in Philadelphia. It's a straight clown show. Um, and you, you heard what I said earlier. Um, they, the Eagles just traded for Gardner Minshew. So that tells me right there. Maybe Jalen Hurts and Joe Flacco ain't giving uh, Soriani um, the field that he wanted. So let me get another quarterback that's not going to give me the field that I want in uh, Gardner Minshew. So right there, that's a clown show. Um, listen, folks, we're coming into the fall. You know what happens in the fall for most states. The state fair is coming. And um, let's just add the Eagle situation as one of the main events in your local state fair. Um, so... I would definitely have had the Eagles at 28. I would have had the Bengals at 27 just because I do have confidence in Joe Burrow. Don't necessarily got confidence in the offensive line, so I don't know how that's going to work. But Joe Burrow has shown me enough to show that he can play this game um, when given the opportunity. So I think that's the difference between the haves and have-nots. Now, when you, you, you get into the middle, listen, um, the old football team here. They gotta be off the strength of their defense, cause I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I would say and if I coach. had to be, and, and the coach, you're right, you're right, you're right, and the coach, and the coach, because you know Ron Rivera won the best to do it. I, and he the GM too, so I should he's, say coach slash GM. Everything. They make, yeah, they make him the owner too. <laughs> Put my beard in. Um, so. Uh, I, I, I'm, you know, the football team is probably where I would start saying every team behind the football team, even the Broncos to this fact, because clearly we need to see them play and make sure Teddy Bridgewater don't, you know, you know, make those mistakes. But I think every team behind the football team is a legitimate case of, you know, what in the hell is going on in the, at the quarterback position? Um, you know, the Bears, question mark, question mark. The Falcons at the Matt Ryan question mark. Like, what are we getting out of Matt Ryan? We've been over the quarterback situation in the Giants. We knew that was a reach the year that they reached for him, and he hasn't proved us wrong yet. Um, the Panthers, you know, once again, that's the team that Teddy Bridgewater came from. That is also the team that, you know, got Sam Donald. Will he be? You explain the Broncos good enough where I don't have to, you know, re-beat up that, that, that dead horse. But... I think that is the difference. When you get to number 20 and you go down to 32, you have major questions at quarterback until you see them play. And and once you get from the Saints, I, I would say to the Saints, to the Titans, now you're, 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 you're kind of like – because I think – I agree with you. I think Jameis Winston is going to be very good for the Saints. I think he's undervalued because of the tomfoolery that he had done up to this point. But – when he's focused, now that he can see, because I don't know how he was an All-American in football and baseball, got scouted by all 32 teams, and nobody knew that he couldn't see. I, I, I don't get that. I'm, to this day, I'm still perplexed that how you pay people, then their job is to know everything about a player, but you didn't know that he couldn't see properly. And then now he got LASIK surgery. The squinting, the squinting to this degree, that wasn't a giveaway either. No, nah, I guess maybe his eyes hurt a lot. I don't know, but they, they, that's just ridiculous. And somebody need to be talking to their scouting department. But now he got late surgery, so clearly, you know, he can see clear now. Give him a commercial on one of the Visine joints or some type of contact, you know, whatever. Um, give him some extra bread. 
And then, like you said, the Patriots, um, it seemed like a passing of the torch in the uh, AFC East there. Uh, the Patriots used to be the big dog on the block, not so much now. It seemed like we're getting more and more support behind the Dolphins, definitely more and more support behind the Bills. Um, so, with that said, we, you know, and then I, I'm going to be honest with you. We talked about this the last show. I don't think the whole Cam Newton, uh, Mac Jones debacle is helping the Patriots either. Um, so we, we'll see how that go. I, I would say this. The Browns at seven, and, I, I, and I'm going to end on this. The Browns at seven. It sounds like it makes sense, but it's one of them things where you're like, nah, no, no, I got to see it first. Got to see it first. I don't know about Baker Mayfield. I don't know if Odell Beckham gonna come back acting a fool. I I I don't know if the defense. Well, the defense should be good, but we don't know if they're gonna be fully healthy, ready to go. Um, I don't know. The Browns. I just gotta see it. I'm not totally convinced on that. So with that said, those were some of the highlights I seen out of this power rankings. But I'm with you. I, I need to know what these guys was doing at the exact time that they came up with these um rankings because. It seemed like we had a whole lot of scotch getting passed around the, the room and, uh, you know, some going on because some of these don't make a whole lot of sense to me. Can I give you one more question just before we close this out? I, okay. think, the, I think the gap between Dallas and Washington is entirely too big from 12 to 20. Do you? Um, offensively, no. If you're talking about the totality of the team, yes. Um, because let's be real here. Washington got the better coach, right? Washington got the better defense. That's hands down. I don't think there's no arguments there. But I, when you when you talk about the offense, right, you take Terry McLaurin out. Um, uh, I think they got like a, a running back there that that lose me. I forgot his Gibson. name. Antonio Gibson. Yeah, Gibson. Those two guys, I think, are certified. Like, them guys can get you somewhere. The rest of the offense is a little bit of a question mark. I don't think I like, you know, the rest of their offense more than I like Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, C.D. Yeah. Lamb, Ezekiel Elliott. You know what I'm saying? And, and, of course, Dak Prescott. So, that's why I say offensively, I think you're about right offensively. But if you take the you put the rest of the package together, yeah, I think that gap is a little egregious. 